Hello, my friends. I'm Lucas and you are watching Coldemons PL. If you like my work, please remember to click thumb up, subscribe to my channel and write some comments. First of all, I would like to mention my wonderful patrons who support my activity. Massive thanks, guys. These are people who believed in my passion, saw something valuable in it and decided to support me. It's really great when you know that there are a few crazy guys in the world who think like you, want to watch what you do and appreciate the effect of your work. This is really super motivating and gives you the strength to continue working. Please don't forget that you can be one of them. Just check my Patreon page and decide if you want to stay with me or go back home. There are different options to join but you need to decide by yourself. Once you join you will be able to surf on my page with no limits, watch and download all superb high resolution pictures, watch progress shots, check stories with unpublished in other medias models, read the articles, watch the videos with no adverts and enjoy other benefits. Thanks to this I will try to give you some interesting content to keep you informed and entertained. I'm not pushing but you know, I'd like to make millions from modeling and this is the easiest way. I'm joking of course, but the truth is that it would be great to do this as a regular job. The only way is to build the channel and get new patrons. That's why in each episode I encourage you to support me in my passion. And I realize it's not easy these days, but if you have a few bucks you could drop in my cup, that would be great. Thanks. As you probably saw in the thumbnail, today I will be talking about Matt and this is the main topic of this episode, but before Matt appears, first a few words and a few seconds of a video about asphalt. As I already mentioned, the base will be divided into two parts. On the higher part there will be an old asphalt road and on the lower an Abrams coming from muddy field. There will be mud, a lot of mud. I used products from Modeler's World to make the asphalt path. In total three different ones with different colors and different consistencies to give an interesting look to this part of the road. Applying these products is not a complicated procedure and can be easily done in a few moments. It's convenient to use a good spatula and in my opinion the most convenient one is the long tool because it can take up larger amounts of material and it's easier to smooth the surface. I decided to give my road an irregular appearance, that's what I would call it. These three types of asphalt will give the right character and you will immediately know that it's not a road traveled very often but enough to avoid leaving unglued holes in it. Most importantly, I don't try to smooth the surface to a perfectly flat one. Imperfections are recommended. I put the first layer as a base on the part where there is supposed to be mud. There is wet mud that will have a satin appearance when dry. Now a little experiment. I spread cracking mud on the foil. I make a layer 1-2 mm thick and leave it to dry. I want to obtain dry pieces from this material that will be the building blocks for larger lumps of mud. I don't know how it will work out or if it's a good idea at all, but it's worth a try.
The trucks are painted and it always happens that they need to be moved a bit. The paint blocked the operation of the links, but it's not a problem at all. The trucks will be glued to the wheels, so I need their work to arrange them on the model without any problems. Nothing more. So there is no point in pretending that they work great and work just like real ones. It took me a few minutes to put them on. I immediately glued the trucks to the wheels and when the entire section were in place, I gently soaked the external joints between the links with glue, which finally held everything firmly. This way the trucks are glued together. After gluing the trucks I started making the wash. I used a very dark color because I wanted to create a strong contrast and in my opinion it worked well on both green and sand colors. I removed the excess with thinner. Even though it hasn't a shiny or satin varnish this is not a problem. As I have said many times I use wash and any excess to create various effects on surfaces. I do it both horizontally and vertically. Stains and streaks can be created very easily this way, but of course it doesn't involve simply splashing the surface. We need to work on it a bit and take care of the results we want to achieve. It's worth remembering that the tanks are dirty. I know this is obvious, but sometimes modelers forget about it and build tanks that look like green candies. And they are not like our cars, but definitely more so. You can say that there is much more of everything there. More stains, more dust, mud, stains from fuel, oil and dirty water, remains of grass, branches and leaves. Therefore, weathering should include such effects. That's why you need to give yourself the green light if you want your model to look even more realistic. Of course, it's not a matter of throwing in everything you can, but doing the entire process with intention and full control. Looking at photos of real vehicles you can see how diverse the effects are and how different stains and dirt look. It's worth using reference photos and building a more or less advanced copy of what you see in them on the model. I usually use a dozen or so photos to have more ideas than I need. We should see what the mud looks like on different abrams, how it's arranged on the fenders or how you can work with various products. From ordinary acrylic paints through pigments to ready to use pastes. That's why I'm not afraid to get my model dirty with weathering paints even if they cover a sophisticated shade of camo. I'm interested in the final effect which is supposed to catch the eye. You may like it or not, but in both cases it's supposed to stop the viewer for longer than a second to look at what I did on the model. And as we say in Poland, it doesn't matter whether they say good or bad, as long as they don't misspell your name. And in my case it's very important because my surname it's impossible to pronounce for many people. Ok, the modeling philosophy took me a few moments, but the dirting is ongoing. Now I am applying the first coat of dry dust, but before when I was talking about very important things, I applied a dark dust base from weathering paint around the ring of the turret. There was also easy chipping medium added to the surface which will serve as an aid in removing light and dried dust. However, it's uh, quite strong and weathering paints are definitely less pigmented than regular paints, so I added some tummy above to make it stronger. I apply this dust to the side surfaces and lightly enter the top of the hull. After it dries I remove the paint, piece by piece, by soaking it in water and then rubbing it with a brush. In this way I work on the entire model, building the first layer of dust and thin dried mud. Because I really like working with pigments and using their properties, after mixing with solution fluid I have mud which I apply to the model. I am not too concerned about the quantities and the appearance will mostly be obscured by subsequent layers. I focus more on splatter than larger stains, although I do build larger mud elements here and there, for example on the front edge where the tank could scoop up more mud by climbing higher hills. On the side surfaces I used pure pigment and hands with Tamiya thinner and solution fluid. I just had fun like a little boy creating various effects and thickness of mud on the covers.
As you can see, I'm quite generous with my splatter of dry mud. I know this, but I'm also sure that most of them will disappear in a moment under the next layers. You can even make something like a filter out of such mud to cover the tracks. I added a few drops of water to make it easier to spread it over the surface. I didn't forget about the wheels because they undoubtedly collect large amount of mud due to their design. As always it's a dirty job but I like to arrange the pigments this way. And of course we cannot forget about the surfaces on the bottom of the hole. I know they won't be visible and it's a piece of good work that no one needs, but they are part of the model like any other. The upper surfaces were also slightly dusted and as I like I started to build contrast between individual parts of the hull. This is best seen at all the hatches and protruding elements which are usually surrounded by dust. I haven't forgotten about the lower surfaces of the turret which must also have some dust on them. You know, it's so relaxing. If you want to break away from reality for a moment, just start dirtying the model with pigments.
The upper surfaces of the turret will be further enriched with details. I want to add transport belts, expanders, different kinds of cases, backpacks, tarps and various stuff that will enrich the look and add colors. That's why I prepared holders in the space behind the gun station. Well, I will prepare that in the next episode. Now I started painting the sides of the entire hole with dirty water from the Spill Wet Effect series. It's a simple job but you have to remember one rule. The spots should be rounded shapes. A trivial statement but quite important in preparing good looking effects in this area. If we make the borders too angular it will look weak and unnatural. It's worth remembering this. The streaks should be as thin and irregular as possible. Of course they should be located in places where they could appear. It's also worth making some small marks by splashing the product all over the model. It's time for the dirt that will give the final character to Abrams. Of course it will be a dark and moist mud that I will create using these two products but also the previously used fluid. I use the pigment to color the finished mud and the fluid is a medium that dilutes it but also integrates the whole thing in place. As in the case of pigments you need to spend some time to properly arrange the mud so that it looks as realistic as possible on the model. I wanted to achieve the effect of a very dirty vehicle which I have seen many times both in photos and in reality. That's why you see so much mud on the model. But I said earlier everything will depend on the ground in which the model will be placed and will create one piece. Generally I focus on the lower parts of the model so as not to completely cover the previous work I did with dry mud. I covered all surfaces that could receive a fair amount of fresh mud. Of course I'm talking about the bottom of the hull, wheels, trucks and rubber covers. The front and rear of the hull splashes and streaks between the individual side shields panels are all components of the entire final effect that I'm working on today. Even such details as a casual inscription on the left side at character and are a very individual approach to the topic. It's something similar to A-Team on KF-51. If you've watched this series you know what I'm talking about.
This is how I finished the plan I had to implement in this video. Muddy chop is ready to be placed on the stand. This will all be in the next episode. Additionally, of course, I will show you how to make the additions I mentioned and prepare the final look of the base. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel and write some comments. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!